But he didn't leave it behind. He took the place of his Merkava and took it with him. He took that revelation of the house of Yahweh. He even saw the DNA of his offspring. Has, any, has anyone in this room ever seen the, the DNA strands of their offspring? But our father Jacob did. And he saw them ascending to Yahweh. He saw them ascending and descending. Why? Reuniting heaven and earth. It was at that place, through the revelation of Yeshua and the worship of Yahweh, that heaven and earth would meet and become one. And that's why Revelation 21 says, The new Yerushalayim will descend out of Yahweh from heaven as a, bri as a bride prepared for her bridegroom. You missed that. You're shaking your head, but you missed that. We talk, we talk about the bride. The bride is Israel. We know that. The bride was Israel. We know that. The bride will be Israel. We even know that. But here's one. The new Jerusalem, which is the home of the bride, Israel, is also called the bride of Yahweh. Turn with me to, Re to Revelation 21. Turn with me to Revelation 21. The city of our future of our future. This place, not only does Yaakov see his bride in the DNA strand, Ted, he saw that ladder, brother, and he saw the DNA strand of all his descendants, the place where they would worship, the way they would look, the way they would act, the way they would appear, the way they would, who they would see at the top of the ladder, how they would approach heaven and heaven's gates. Are you with me? Amen. Jacob had all of this. He was in a supernatural, mighty, end time, Merkava. Now look at Revelation 21. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Verse 10. He carried me away in the spirit. Uh-oh. Another Merkava. See, that's what these bird brains don't understand. You cannot understand the Birch HaDashah, the new, renewed covenant, without seeing that all these people were taken in an esoteric, mystical, hidden revelations and put in the back of a Merkava. Yahweh's chariot to ascend and see these things that are unlawful for a man to utter. Are you with me? And he carried me away. What's another way to say carried me away? Put me in the back seat of a Merkava of his presence. He put me in, we're in part three of a Merkava of his presence. He put me in the back seat of a Merkava of his presence. Notice, he carried me away in the Ruach to a great high mountain. He showed me the great city, the set apart Jerusalem descending out of heaven from Elohim. Now we go back to verse 2. Coming down out of heaven. Hello? What was Yaakov's ladder? Uniting the heavenly Jerusalem with the earthly Jerusalem. The heavenly temple with the earthly temple. The heavenly messengers with the earthly Israelite messengers. Bringing the conjunction of heaven and earth, all things in and around the anointed stone. Now watch this, verse 2. The new Yerushalayim came down out of heaven from Elohim. Don't you ever say from Elohim? Don't you ever say from Elohim? Came down out of heaven from Elohim prepared as a bride. Not only are you Israel, Judah and Ephraim, the bride of Yeshua, our future home is also his bride. Are you with me? He takes the heavenly bride, Jerusalem, the earthly bride, Israel, and brings us, the chi us into the chamber and the chamber into us. Is anything that's making sense? And it's all through that middle pillar of Yahweh's plurality of divinity, his manifestation, through the middle pillar. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. So the new Yerushalayim is called the bride. All right? The new, our home is called the bride. Go back to Beratius. Is anyone enjoying? Hallelujah. Anyone from row four to the back? You think this is easy? You can teach, no problem. Let's try that again. Is anyone enjoying? Yahweh. Thank you, sister. Beratius, Beratius 28. Beratius 28. Yaakov rose up early took the stone that he had put in his head, <clears throat> set it up as a standing column in the memory of the, of the standing column of salvation, which is the road to heaven's gate, the steps of the future sons of Israel. He poured oil on top of it. So in other words, the stone became anointed. 
the stone became, how many stones were in that place? Many. How many stones did he take? One. In other words, Buddha is a stone. Confucius is a stone. Zoroaster is a stone. Juan Pablo II is a stone. But there's only one anointed stone. Amen. He took that stone and he poured oil over it. And the oil is, a, he anointed that stone. And the Hebrew word for anointed, now this is real hard now. The Hebrew word for anointed is Mashiach. Hallelujah. He had a messianic stone. He anointed that stone. It was an anointed stone. It was the messianic stone that would be the foundation of the future assembly of Yahweh. That stone, that foundation of Yaakov's life would be built to build the assembly of Yahweh, the new city, the bride of Yahweh, the, pe the, the people, the DNA strand, the trilateral DNA strand of Yahweh. It all come from not just a stone in the house of Elohim, Bethel. There was an anointed stone in the house of Yahweh. And that stone walked into the temple and said, do not make my father's house a house of merchandise. No. Because it was the stone upon which the temple was built. And he had the authority of all the going on in that house. And it is that stone that became anointed with oil. The anointed stone. The messianic stone. It, and what is the purpose of, of, of acquainting ourselves with the messianic stone? Be it known unto you that it was the stone of Yaakov, which was the stone of our father Jacob, which has become the stone that the builders rejected, that is now the head of Yahweh's corner, the renewed covenant assembly. And that stone would build Yahweh's assembly upon which Jacob's seed would enter. And Yahshua said, here's the Mirkava, Kifa. Here's the Mirkava, Peter, upon this rock. This rock, the one you saw, the one Yaakov saw. I'm going to build my The same way I built it in the physical in Israel, now I'm going to build it in the spirit, the body of Yeshua. Are you with me? Baruch Hashem Yahweh. The anointed stone, the messianic or this Evan Mishichi, the messianic stone. You know what else is interesting, brothers and sisters? There are many stones out there, as we just said. Huh? Mariah Carey is a stone for some. Madonna is a stone for others. Huh? Zoroaster, Wicca, Anton LaVey. <laughs> Biblia Satanista. There's any stone. There's only one stone that Yeshua would build his ecclesia on. Are you with me? But another play on words, brothers and sisters, what is the word for ladder we say? Sulam, which is a derivative of the word shalom. So when we say shalom, we say Yahweh's ladder of peace be upon you. May you climb it the way Yaakov climbed it. May you climb it the way the disciples climbed it. And may you see heaven's gates the way they saw heaven's gates because only the middle pillar that, that anointed stone that has become the middle column that's standing. Notice it's a stand. <laughs> standing column. It's a standing column. Well, Rabbi, I believe the Jews are the Old Testament bride and the church... Oh, hold it, sweetheart. Stop right there. It's a standing column. What does it stand for? It'll stand for this age, the next age, Olam Hazet, Olam Haba. How long will that column stand? Forever. Stand there. So if Yeshua took another stone and another column to build a new separate entity apart from the historic people of renewed covenant Israel, he's a false Mashiach and he's his stone, but he's not a stone that is Yahweh's oil of anointing. The stone that he used to build his assembly was already...